here with a special guest. Could you introduce yourself in Polish, please? Oh, of course, I will try. Um, I'm Jestem Sham Phoenix, i jestem MC i wokalistą. Very nice. Bardzo ładnie. Dziękuję bardzo. Okay, so how did that Phoenix nickname originate? Well, uh, it was sort of spur of the moment, to be honest. Um, when I was when I was a kid, I liked X Men and Marvel comics oh. a lot, and it started oh, so it was from there. Jane Grey. Right. Jane Grey, but the Phoenix, because I never used to like Jane Grey. Jane was annoying. <laughs> All right, yeah. I remember the Phoenix saga. I remember. Yep. I was a big fan too. All right, and. Um, but now it's taken more of a. Uh, yeah. More of a symbolic me- meaning, let's say, for the f- b- the bird, the phoenix. All right. Yeah. So, like, uh, are you a reborn from the ashes av- after every concert, or like? Well, maybe on a deeper <laughs> on a deeper level. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, maybe let's not get too deep <laughs> on that. Uh, so, you were born in Jamaica and you moved to UK. Everybody thinks that. That's not true. That uh, was, I was born true. in the UK. All right. And then I moved to Jamaica. All right. So yeah. it's the other way around. It's the other way around. So um, could you tell me, like, what series of events led you to start living in Poznan then? Well, I I'll was... Try to make it short. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. Uh, hmm. I needed to go to the dentist. Poland has good cheap dentists. I came to Poland to go to the dentist. Oh. I met a guy. And I'm still here. That's a short and sweet version. <laughs> and how are your teeth? Good. Teeth are great. Yeah. yeah all right. the dentists and bowling are good. <laughs> I start. <laughs> product placement. Okay. Well, even product service placement. <laughs> yeah. Um, could you tell me what are your biggest musical influences? Uh, at the moment or when I was starting out? Yeah, when you were starting out and then how it influenced you and how, how it changed maybe. Uh, okay. At the beginning, I would say Miss Dynamite for sure. Uh, she was she was my first big influence, let's say, when it comes to doing what I'm doing now, I'm seeing and this sort of music. Um, DWE, Nasty Crew, a lot of pirate, a lot of pirate and underground uh, grime and UK garage crews were influential. Any uh, USA artists? MCs? Ah, DMX. DMX. But that was even earlier than Miss Dynamite. That was while I was in Jamaica, so around the age of 10, 11, DMX, uh, Slim Shady. Really? I remember Slim hearing Shady. Slim Shady and not even knowing that who, what he looked like, who he was, just <laughs> having a cassette and was... All right. Yep, it was great. <laughs> I didn't expect that one coming. Why not? I, you know. You don't like Eminem? Um, yeah, I, I liked him <laughs> at first when he was funny. Now he's just sad i guess maybe some, some people can say that fame maybe does that to you know yeah that's more true. money more problems well said okay mm, since we know where you came from and when when it comes to music where do you want to go from hi- from here and what are your future plans <laughs> future as in long-term future or short-term future like like, uh, where do you see your music in thousands of years? <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> like playing in a lobby or more like being like a goddess? I that in a thousand years, my music will be used in some sort of place of worship. <laughs> right. Yeah, so that's I the d- goddess scenario, right? <laughs> that's what I thought. <laughs> I'm joking. All right, no, but seriously, uh, in near future, let's say. Uh, in the near future, I would like to... I'd like to hope that people would just appreciate it and people would have a good time to my music because I don't... I don't know, I, don't, I like making music that people want to dance to because I love to dance myself, so... I'm not really such, I'm not really big in sitting down and chilling and listening to chill out music. I want to go to the club, I want to dance, I want to enjoy myself. So hopefully I can make music that will make people enjoy themselves. All right. Nice. And um, there's a word on the street that your new video is coming out. Any leaks on that? Is there? Hmm. Well, all I can say at the moment is that... 
Changes was the beginning and the only way is up. All right. So there's much more coming and I'm really excited about it. I'm hoping that you all will be once okay. you see it as well. Well, that's not the answer I wanted <laughs> to hear, man. What did you want to hear exactly? Well, I like maybe uh, when is it coming or who's in it? Are you, is it a collaboration or is it a solo? You mean my next solo thing or my next yeah, collaborative yeah. thing? Well, uh, the next thing coming. Okay, the <laughs> next thing coming will be a collaborative track. Uh, yeah. One that was done with a couple of other Polish MCs. All right, a uh, couple of them. Yep, a couple of them. Right. Uh, one of them is is making a, a name for himself. Is one of my, I would say, is one of the forefathers, future forefathers of Polish grime, All right. in my opinion. Okay, I um, I think I uh, I know who it is, but I'm not gonna <laughs> say it yet. You gotta wait and see people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You just have to wait for that. And um, so uh, you're l releasing your tracks on. Ictus label? Yes. Could you elaborate on that? Ictus. On the whole label? And well, uh, <coughs> most might, might, might know Ictus as being Ictus Sound System. Uh, Ictus is basically a group of friends generally and people who are like-minded and have specific skills when it comes to, it could be animation, it could be music, it could be uh, graphics, any sort of creative skill. And we collaborate with each other and help each other out and work together. And the label itself is something that we've been working on for maybe a year or so now. Uh, now it's gone into, I would say, overdrive now, where we have... Hyperspace. We, yep. Yep. We've gone into hyperspace. <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Trekkie. <laughs> You're Trekkie. There is a gig coming with you and uh, Dynasty MC. How do you feel about it? Are you excited? Um, I'm excited about the gig on a whole yeah. because I always, I always am excited about working with other females in music because I think that there aren't as many females doing this as there should be. Right. And call me a bit of a feminist. Okay, feminist. <laughs> but I wouldn't... I mean, not in the sense of, I believe in equality, and I think that women have as much to offer as men. And in some cases, we're not recognized enough. Okay. And um, <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> and uh, how do you feel about the clash of uh, British and American emceeing, like rapping? What do you mean? Like Explain. you and Dynasty, she's American, right? So like it's gonna be a grime with rap, two different worlds in in a way. From what I've understood, uh, yeah. she's gonna be playing. We're gonna be playing totally different sets. So yeah. I think yeah. I think the aim of this Femsi's blend, in my my translation of it, was that. Uh, it would be about women coming together and do it, showing what they're doing, displaying what they're doing. Um, I've had some contact with, uh, I think, Vrona, one of the other girls that is performing there. Uh, she sort of reached out to me and asked me to, uh, if she could use my video or my song in one of her interviews. And I was really, I don't know, I, I really appreciate when, I think as women, we can be sometimes quite, uh, what's the word? How do I say it without? Women can be quite catty. And it's yeah. always nice to make contact with another artist and find out that they're cool and they're nice. I'm excited about this, this Femsi's Ben party. Mm. I'm excited about me meeting like minds. Yeah, I think uh, female MCs should collaborate more and like get together and show uh, your strength. Exactly. Right? You don't see male MCs dissing each other at, like... And well, they do. Well, not as much as women do. Women generally seem to want to be the top dog or... Top, top bitch. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> not me. I think there's... Yeah. All right. Um, let's, uh, let's get to the next question. Um, and I saw you once uh, on YouTube freestyling. And what do you think about the whole concept of freestyle battles and dissing and... <laughs> Beefs and 
you know, competing with each other? Well, I would say that Braga is Braga, you know. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of things that you can say when you're clashing with someone or when you're in a battle with someone that you wouldn't say this to them in everyday real life. I mean, even, I think me at the moment, I'm writing sometimes tracks that are more aggressive, This not unlike, completely unlike changes. And there are some elements of aggression in them, but I think this is what music and expression is about. Just because, <clears throat> excuse me, just because you say that you're, you'd react in a certain way to someone in a song, it yeah. doesn't mean that you'd actually do it in real life. It's like video games. Just because you kill people in video games don't mean that you kill people in real life. Or do you? <laughs> or do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, um, do you listen to Polish rap music? Um, are you planning to rap in Polish one day? You know, if my Polish would ever get to the standard that I would see fit as being able to rap, then I would attempt to do it. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I would say, uh, before I came to Poland, I was a fan of Polish hip hop. Um, not, I didn't know so many artists, but Focus, for example, I knew uh, a few of his songs before I came here because I was living with Poles in England. Oh, uh, nice. he's one of my favorite and one of the people that I intend to collaborate with at some point. Um, HST, Heister. I remember this song with uh, Focus that he did yeah. with the epic video. Do you remember that? Yeah, in Katowice. Yeah. Mm. Daru mi trochę słońca and the, the other one, I guess it was connected. Like animated like video. Animated? Yep. It was, right. They were standing in front of some sort of burning stuff and throwing stuff. Like no. It was... No. Uh, who else do I like in terms of Polish hip-hop? Mm, I can't say that I'm so clued up on Polish hip-hop, like current Polish hip-hop, because I'm doing my stuff. Hip-hop for me is about understanding. And if right. you don't understand what you're listening to in terms of hip-hop, then you can't really say that you're enjoying the music. A few words on the comparison of the Polish and the UK scene. Like, maybe some listener, listeners don't know how the UK, UK scene works. And like In terms of what, though? What scene? The music, the rapping, you know, like... You see, you're, you're asking me about hip-hop, but I'm not, not a hip-hop maybe not, artist. You asked me about hip-hop Maybe artists. not the complete hip-hop, but, but MCing or like rapping. Okay. Like uh, only this. How is it different part. in Poland from in the UK? Yeah. <laughs> from what I know of Polish hip-hop, from what I've witnessed, I would say that Polish hip-hop is more of a more of a copy of American hip hop. Yeah, it's right. like a Polish version of what America is doing. Whereas UK hip hop is completely its own. It's not a copy of America's stuff because we have a completely different accent. There's no way to even pretend like we're doing the same thing as they're doing. I think it's a subculture that has, that has grown to its own right. Uh, Roots Maneuver, you wouldn't compare Roots Maneuver, for example, to, to Jay-Z or someone right, like that. Right. It's completely different sounds. Yeah. That's true. So I think UK hip hop is a genre of its own. Okay, yeah, that's what I wanted to hear, and that's what I wanted you to introduce to the Polish, you know, Aha. Polish public eye. Yeah. Like maybe introduce grime a little bit. Okay. Say uh, a few words about it. Grime, grime was, grime was a product. I would say, UK garages baby, UK garages bastard child was grime. <laughs> <laughs> when I came back from, uh, returned to England from Jamaica, um, this was when UK Garage was, was sort of the underground thing to do. As being at the, at the age that I was at, I was about maybe 14, and this was when I started getting, in, getting interested in rave culture and going out and wanting to do stuff that was different from going to a club and listening to just R&B and pop. Um, we started going to under 21's raves. Uh, I started listening to pirate radio stations. I remember sitting and listening and being really, really, I don't know, there was something about this music that I thought, you know what, I can do this and it's great. And it was just the fact that you could talk about anything right. that was, it could be something that you were pissed off about. It could be something that you were passionate about um, and it, was something that these MCs 
were able to do over different beats. It wasn't that you had a hip hop beat and you had to do it on hip hop. If they played a dance beat, then these guys could MC over it. If they played a pop beat, these guys could MC over it. They were really, really versatile and this was what stood out for me. All right. And how old were you like then? About, about 14, I would say. And can you tell me where were your parents while you were doing that? My, I was in my room. Uh, what do you mean, writing or going to raves? No, going to raves, like no, partying, had, listening had, to the grimes, like had, uh, MCs cursing and saying. We had in in London. We have uh, we have under 21s raves. All right. So there were raves that you'd only go to if you were under the age of 21 years old. And okay. I remember being so people over uh, 21 couldn't couldn't go get in. in. No, no, no. Seriously? They didn't serve alcohol. You weren't allowed to get in. Some were under 18, some were under 21s. Under 21s, they'd had alcohol, but you'd have to show ID to buy alcohol. Okay. Or be able to convince someone to buy you alcohol. <laughs> okay. Uh. You, you had your tricks. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, you wanted to add something? No, you asked me where my parents were. My mum... Um, my mom actually brought me and my friend to my first under 21s rave and there were loads of parents standing oh. outside this club waiting for their little kids to get in. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> I'd love to see that, you know. Like I think you should have a Poland. Parents waiting for kids other, uh, coming from back from a rave party. Like <laughs> sounds abstract for a Polish person, you know. Let's just start this here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, let's do this. Children. <laughs> let's rave <laughs> only rave can save us yep. <laughs> open your uh, mind <laughs> hey, uh, I heard that you DJ when is the next time we can hear uh -huh. you DJ I, I do DJ occasionally um, mm. the next gig will be on Women's Day International Women's Day on the 8th of March right. in Project Lab uh, just close to here where I actually work as well as bar manager um All right. Alongside with, <laughs> alongside my friend. Uh, yeah, that'll be the next time that I'll be playing. I haven't played in a while though. Last time it was, I mean in public, last time was a year ago on Women's Day. And once a year. Okay, and uh, what's the, what's your typical DJ selection? Like what kind of genres do you play? It, or? it varies, you know. Varies. As I said, I like to, I like to dance and people have to dance when I'm playing this. This is my aim. This is what I want people to do. I, I don't want to stand there and watch me like, oh, okay. Uh, so it generally can be anything. I'm not going to give it away what it's going to be now, but oh. it will be pumping for sure. And it will be danceable for sure. And I'll be on that stage dancing along for sure. Okay. That that pumping part would sounds scary, but what does it sound I'm scary? excited. <laughs> your, your brain's in the gutter, my friend. <laughs> Pumping, you know, like pumping, like we cut carks on the stage with me, All right. and me heads <laughs> pumping. <laughs> yeah, so come and pump with Sham Phoenix uh, on the 8th of March in Project Lab. And uh, any other thing you wanted wanted to add, maybe for the Polish listener and uh, people waiting for your next tracks. I think that in terms of if you liked changes, then you've got. I've got a lot more in store for you. I think my aim as speaking from the viewpoint of like Phoenix as well is to be continually rising and that's my plan. So there's a lot more to come from me and I think that it's a lot more great stuff. There's a lot of super mutant grime coming this way. Mutated grime, <laughs> mutated <laughs> pots. Pot? Pop. <laughs> Pot. <laughs> I'm okay. sorry. Głodnemu chleb na myśli. Okay. Um, I guess that's it. Thank you for listening, for watching us. Blender Art, Sean Phoenix. Yep, thank you, Blender Art, for having me. Catch her um, supporting Dynasty MC and DJing soon. Peace, Peace out, y'all.